Hey, hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're already working with Snowflake, you know how crucial it is to keep track of your tables. But wait, what happens if the structure of your table got changed? I'm talking about the DDL changes. Suppose your teammate had added a new column or they have added, they have dropped a new uh, one column or changed a data type. Now your manager wants you to keep an audit trail of those modifications. In Snowflake, we know tracking a DML changes like insert, update, delete, it's super easy using the streams or the changes. They're fantastic for capturing the row level data changes. But what if we have to find out the DTL changes in Snowflake, then how can we implement it? Because in Snowflake, we do not have any handy features or any handy functions which can give me a trail that okay, these were the DTL changes you made into the Snowflake tables. So for that, we need a robust way to monitor schema modification, not just to know what changed, but also when. So imagine there is, we do have these two tables like customer and the product. In the customer, you can see, I do have four column at this stage, and then someone added this phone number. So I need to know like okay, when it got added, and like what basically added into that. So I need to maintain a log table in that, I get to know that in the customer table, we added a phone number and into the right hand side, if you see, I have deleted the barcode. So I should also have one um, basically entry that uh, the barcode is deleted from the product table. So I hope you have understood that what is our goal to track schema changes dynamically every time a tables get modified. Uh, we need to have uh, addition, we need to log additions, modification or deletion of any column into any particular tables, or you can even like make, make, make into a particular schema. If you're going to change into the table, uh, like any changes made into those tables, the, those schema tables, how are we going to do it? So for this, what I'm going to do, I will be first creating two essential tables. So let me go back to my snowflake and here I will be understanding that why we need to have these two tables. The very first thing I'm going to have an existing snapshot. Why this existing snapshot? Because this will tell me what is the, uh, what is the current stage of my schema, current state of my tables. So let's say if I take this show tables command, and here I do have this customer table. If I run it, select star from customer, I'll be checking that I do have five, six columns here. Or probably six, seven columns I do have here. Okay, so here this customer key address, nation, phone number, account balance I have and the customer experience. So I need to like uh, log it or I need to store this current schema information so that I will be having one reference to compare with if i have if i'm asking you to find the top five like uh, the five differences in this picture you would be requiring a reference picture to compare with okay so the very first thing i'm gonna have one table called current schema snapshot and now where from i will be taking because we have been talking about the columns. We have been talking about addition of column, deletion of the column. So we have one column, one table already into the information schema called columns. So I'm not going to run it fully. I'm just going to run limit 10 to show you a few records. Now here we do have table catalog, table schema, table names, column names, and their data type. So I need to uh, like um, uh, store table name, column name and data type. This is what I'm going to take care of it. And then I will be comparing this with the columns because as soon as I'm going to change anything into this customer table, it is going to reflect over here. Wants to check it out? Let me just show it to you. If I'm going to do alter table customer and before that let me just show it to you where table name customer oh my bad so i'm gonna took it this one and table schema also i'm going to take branch to make my search very short 
we had table name customer maybe then yeah so i do have this table name called customer here and here i'm gonna get these seven columns so if i'm gonna like uh, add column let's say c phone c8 okay at this end if i'm going to add this column now select star from customer will be having another column is and so that this information schema dot column will also be having the eight record and here we can see this is the c8 so what does it mean i'm gonna take the snapshot of the current position of the current columns for all the tables in this one schema However, you can make it to the entire account or for the particular database and particular schema. But I'm taking for this YouTube learning database and the bronze schema. So for that, I will be taking, I'm going to create one snapshot table, create or replace table current snapshot. And this is going to be stored into my current snapshot. Now, this is the step one where we have fetched the current schema. This procedure is going to grab all the latest schema details um, like all columns and respective data type from our main table from our information schema column table. Now, next, I'm going to compare the snapshot. OK, so then I will be comparing the before picture and the after picture. So which is again going to be stored in tables. So now if I'm going to make any change on this table, this will get updated. And this is before picture. This will be after picture. So I will be comparing these two tables and then whatever operation we are going to make it, we're going to store into one log tables because I need to have a separate log table. So let me just create that log table or audit table into our next step. So here we can call it as a DDL change log. I need table name, column name. Now this is important what operations we are making. So we're going to make it like edit, dropped or modified like a column added or you, you can change it anything because this is a hard coded one. We're going to pass it. Then the old data type, new data type, and change timestamp and change by. Who is actually going to make the changes? So we will be taking all these things. For that, I am gonna create this table. So I do have the DDL change log, also this customer table, this uh, current snapshot. Now I'm actually going to recreate this customer snap current snapshot. Why? Because if I'm going to create my procedure, this will also have the entry for DDL change log. Let's see that. I mean, if it is going to capture or not. Uh, so I'm again going to repeat because we created this current snapshot table before having our log tables. So in this column table, we are going to have all these information also. Now, next thing. How will I know that whether this column has been added or not, or whether this column has been deleted or not? Any idea? You can pause this video. Think, how will you get to know whether your record has been added or deleted or any change data type? It's simple. We're going to take a table name with the, like, uh, we're going to take this current snapshot we will be comparing with this columns. We will be finding out if there is any column name or not. If yes, then we're going to have it as an edit. If it is there, but the data type got changed. So we will be comparing with the data type also. So let me just show you very simple query. First, I'm going to run it in the separate and then I will be wrapping up into a stored procedure. So what I was saying is if I am going to take, I'm going to take with the main main table and then I'm doing a left join current snapshot. If the table name is there, then it's fine. And then it is comparing with the column name. Now I'm taking for this catalog, which is a database and the bronze schema, which is the current schema. If any new column is there, then we have going to call it as added. So let me run this 
and see what is going to give me. Now here, if you will look at it, this is going to have a current snapshot. So we have created a table called current snapshot, which is going to hold all these informations. Like these are the change data type. These are the column names. And this is the new data type is called text. If it would be like integer and all, then we could have added it. But now, what if you have deleted anything or if I'm just going to show you in the same way, what if I'm going to add any new table? What if I'm going to have any new table, which is going to be uh, like uh, which table is already there and not that you can find out. Uh, so for that, you can simply remove based on this table name condition. But because we are assuming that all the tables are there. So let me just show it to you. Alter table C age uh, one. I'm taking this column now. So once I have done it, now what is going to be, what, what will happen in the back end? In the current snapshot, we were not having any customer table with the CAs1 column. So this will come here. The table name is going to be compared with the table name. The column name will be like, we'll try to compare with the column name, but then it will not find. So this is going to have one more entry as added. This will have one more entry called added. Why? Because we are comparing with this column. In this column, it immediately get reflected. We are taking a left join on this. So if any record is not there, what left join does, whatever the record we do have in the left table will also be retrieved after comparing with the matching record from the current snapshot. And this is the condition we are passing here. Fine here. Okay. So in this way, we're going to get all the newly added columns. Now, same way, I will be doing this query for deleted and the modified. So I have mentioned this deleted dropped column here. I'm passing this dropped as manually, but then comparing it this time I'm doing it reverse. Left table is my current snapshot. Then only I'll realize whether this column has been deleted or not. Those who are still confused, just think I do have, I have taken a photo of WhatsApp chat. Okay, now you are checking your WhatsApp chat with your friend and they have deleted the message. They have deleted the message. Now you won't be able to know what message has been deleted until you see your uh, screenshot. So that's why in the cases of deleted or dropped, we need the snapshot as a left table. And then we're going to do the same thing. Now in the next one, we are going to compare this time we were comparing with the table name and the column name but to identify or to detect the modify column name we will be also declaring the data type so if the data type is not matching with the source and basically we can say columns with the snapshot then it should have the entry so i'm going to write these three insert statement this i'm going to make it more easy however you can change it or you can monitor like alter the stored procedure based on your requirement i'm not passing any parameters why because i'm only and only capturing for this particular database and the schema if you want to make it more dynamic you could have given the parameters like database name schema name tables name as per your need so the first thing is delete, detect added column. Second is detect deleted or dropped column. And the third one is the modified. Now, if I'm not going to update my snapshot table this time, then it will also give me every time I'm going to run it, every time it will be giving me those records, which can then have a duplicate. So for this, I will be deleting the snapshot means the current snapshot and then I will be updating this snapshot with the current columns with the current information schema column state. And last this I'm going to return a DDL changes detection completed successfully. So let me run this stored procedure and let me like uh, compile this. This has been done. So this is SP track DDL changes. I'm now going to call it.
And once it is done, we will be checking the data into this detail changes log. So right, whatever we were getting over there, because this all were added, this is fine for me. But now what I'm going to do is I am going to drop some column. And uh, this time, let me let me try with some other tables. So I'm going to have added and dropped both. Let's take one nation. Uh, so what I do have in the nation column, uh, okay, the, in the nation table, I have four uh, columns. So what I'm going to do is alter table nation, drop column and comment. I have dropped this column. Now, one more thing what I'm going to do is into the reason, select star from reason. In this, I do have mm, two, three columns. Alter table reason, drop column, R comment, and alter table add column. The reason details. So first I'm dropping this column, then I'm adding another column. Now let me run this procedure one more time. So currently into my DDL change log, I have these four columns. If I'm going to run it, I made three operations, two delete, one added. So I should have the seven entries now once this stored procedure run completely. So then I'm going to check it. And yes, we do have the seven records. One I, uh, one I made on the nation column, which is operation made dropped. Two I made on the reason column. One is dropped, one is added. Now the same thing you can try with the changing the data type also and uh, you can make it multiple operations and then can detect it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you need any of, uh, like if you have any queries, feel free to write, uh, type into the comment box and share with your friend. Thank you so much.